Hello everyone, uh, this is the start of Garb August and the start of my vlog. I've never done a vlog before but these are going to be little bits so as we go along. But this is the first book I'm reading for Garb August. So this is Signor Saint. So I don't know a lot about the saint except I did watch the original, the, the uh, Return of the Saint with Ian Ogilvy when I was really little and there was the um, Roger Moore thing, which I watched a bit of, but I don't really know a lot about it. But um, yeah, this um, will probably be ideal way to start. I'll let you know what I think in a minute. In a minute? Soon. So, Signor Saint is a series of four short stories that take the saint across Latin America. And I've read the first story now, uh, so this is the, my first taste of the saint. And uh, Leslie Charteris has got quite an interesting way of writing. Um, when he gets going with the interactions between the characters, it's quite uh, fast-paced. But the exposition elements in the story are quite um, laboured. I'll just um, give an example. La Paz lies near the southern tip of the peninsula of Baja, California, Lower California in English, a low, narrow leg of land which stretches down from the southern border of California and the United States. On account of the peculiarly ineradicable obsession of American statesmen with abstract lines of latitude and longitude as boundaries, instead of more intelligible geographic or ideographic frontiers, which accepted the ridiculous 38th parallel partition of Korea as naturally as the quaint geometrical shape of most American state lines, this protuberance was blandly excluded from the deal which brought California into the Union. Although topographically, it is, an obvious, it is as obviously a, pro, a proper part of California as its name implies. There is in technical fact a link of dry land south of the border connecting Baja California with the mainland of Mexico, but there is no practical transportation across it. No civilised way for one to the other without passing through the United States. For all the rest of its length, the Gulf or Lower California, or the Sea of Cortez, as the Mexicans know it, thrusts a hundred miles or more of deep water between the two. That's before the story gets going. Um, so the story in itself is quite slight and and um, a bit fluffy. It's, it doesn't really um, get going. It doesn't, it's not very long, uh, which is why I say it's kind of slight. You sort of read and go, oh, okay. Um, but there's a, there's a kind of a self-awareness in, in the, in the relationships that he has with women, it seems. I think he knows that he's being, um, he's writing a ladies' man. Uh, I don't know that it could get more, um, sexist maybe as I read more of his stuff but certainly this first story didn't seem overly like that but apparently there is a reputation for it um but it seems to be quite self-aware and witty so so yeah as a story the first story was um a bit too quaint and fluffy to really get going but interesting first read I'll see what the other three are like okay the second story in this book was called the revolution racket it was better than the first one. It was more uh, intriguing, thrilling. It's about double crossing. It's about double crossing between gun runners, and uh, the saint was kind of in the middle of it. It was more far fetched, but more enjoyable. So I'm getting a sense of what the style is and who he is as a character, and uh, yeah, it's that sort of charming, sort of Bond type character, but without him being attached to a government. He seems to be a bit freelance. And a bit of a swindler himself. So, yeah, interesting. Okay, now I've read the other stories in this. I've finished this book. And uh, it's an interesting diversion. First time I've read anything like this, really. And uh, I have got one other to, one to read. I'll probably read it. Not sure. But it's okay. Uh, the last story is about con men. And I really like stories about con men. But the end of it was a little bit, kind of a bit of an anticlimax. But, yeah, uh, interesting. Okay, book number two for Garb August is Babylon 5, book number one, Voices. So obviously this fits into the Babylon 5 readathon as well. So a big nod to Sean. And this will be the first time I've read a tie-in book from Babylon 5, even though it is absolutely one of my all-time favourite shows. So Babylon 5, Voices, I'll see what this is like.
So this was the second book I read for Garb August. So this is obviously a tie-in to the series, which is why it links to Garb August. And I've been curious over the years because I'm a huge Babylon 5 fan. Um, but yeah, I was disappointed. I didn't think it was very good. Um, it was written, I think it's more about the way it was written than anything else. There's exclamation marks in every single sentence, I think. And there's like, just it's just the way it's written. It seems a bit like it's written for a 12-year-old. The, the plot is pretty standard. The narrative voice is really ordinary and, and like I said, very kind of juvenile, if that's a bit strong, it's a bit of a strong word. But yeah, it wasn't a, a very good start to my Babylon 5 books. I've only got one anyway, but um, I'm going to try other authors because it could be the author, but I was disappointed. So my third book, um, I'm going to try this. So this is part of the film tie-in idea of Garbogs, but it's also a track book, so it goes with the track book, so book track, book track 2022. I'm starting with this because I've got some original series novel novels, and I've got this, and DS9 is my favourite incarnation of Star Trek, so I thought, well, I'll go with this first. But there are, I've got, I've got, there's a, a couple of second-hand bookshops that have got loads of Star Trek novels that, if, if anyone wants to recommend one that's particularly good, I could look out for that. But I'm going to start with this, see if there's any good. I read the blurb on the back, and the plot looks interesting. Um, I don't know, it could be another disappointment. Um, <laughs> but I'll see what it's like. So that's my third book for Garb August. Oh, just one other thing, because I know this is going to go, go up. As soon as I've read this, I'm going to put this up, so I'm going to do it in chunks. Um, so this will be my part one for Garb August. But just, um, if you are watching this, when it goes up, and you get to this point, uh, later on in, uh, in in this month, there's going to be a video coming up of my top 10 Babylon 5 episodes. And then in, in September, I've done a video, it's already scheduled to go up, I've already done it. Uh, in September, there's the top 10 Star Trek original series episodes. And then in October, again, already done, already scheduled to go up, is my top 10 Next Generation episodes. So if you are into Star Trek, I'd love to see what you think of those videos. And then in November, I've got planned, haven't done it yet, but for November, I'm doing my top 20 DS9 episodes. So we'll see what you think of those uh, choices for those episodes when it goes up. I really do want to know what you think of those. Thanks a lot for watching. Um, I'll tell you what I think of Objective Bajor very soon. Everybody, so this is my uh, third book completed for Garb August and also Book Trek. Uh, yeah, it's relevant to Book Trek as well. So this is uh, a Deep Space Nine novel. It's number 15 on the, uh, the stack of DS9 novels that were written. Uh, Objective Bajor. And actually, this was really good. So um, as you can probably see from the beginning of this video, I was disappointed by the Babylon 5 one, which is a shame, because I love Babylon 5 to death. And this was really good. I had lots of different um, points of view. So there was about four different stories going on. And the central villain, if you like, had a really interesting issue and motivation. The DS9 crew were absolutely true to the TV series. And it was lovely sort of uh, being in their skin for a bit, reading it. Um, there's a funny thing with novelizations I've noticed. Um, and I'm not sure, I might have re read something in the past because I, it seems to ring a bell. But the amount of time Cisco referred to Dax as old man was definitely more often than he did in the series. It was like um, the writer clearly knew that he did it and thought he'd do it loads of times just to sort of reinforce you I did it. I do know that he does that. It's like, yeah, well, you don't need to do it that often. Because <laughs> he did it every, I don't know, probably every, don't know, 10 episodes or something. Uh, he didn't do it that often. Um, it, was, it was quite a nice thing about his character because obviously it was a reinforcement of Dax being lots of personalities. But, yeah, he does it a lot in this. But it's fine. It doesn't really matter. And... Uh, there is one line that Cisco says that he wouldn't have said really. It's a bit weird, like uh, threatening to beat someone to a pulp who's a, like a diplomat. And he was more feisty than others. I mean, famously, or famously, uh, I'll say it, famously, he uh, was the guy that punched Q uh, in the one episode that Q appeared in DS9. So he was definitely more 
um, physical than the others, but I don't think he would have threatened a diplomat to beat him to a pulp, so there's a bit of a weird line. But, all in all, uh, it was um, pretty faithful to the show. And it was quite interesting that the, the first sort of third of the book, the way that the, the plot built up was really interesting because the DS9 characters were in the background and in the foreground were these um, people that are interacting with these aliens. And there was this peril being built up really well. And it was really intriguing. And the ending, the sort of the, the kind of finale, if you like, the big race to the finish, was paced really well. And it was it was um it was just a really well written book. So so yeah, I thought that was a really nice way to begin book trek. And Garb August, as it's a tie-in, my third book in Garb August. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to uh, read next, but I'm going to put this up as the first vlog, and then um, I'll do another vlog later on in the month. But uh, yeah, have you read any of these books I've talked about? I talked about Senor Saint. Any? Have, have you read any Saint books? And then I read the uh, the Babylon Five One Voices, which I was disappointed by, and then Book Trek DS Nine Objective Basil. So, so yeah, what other um, Star Trek books would you recommend? Because I've got a bunch of them that I've bought for Garb August, but um, are there some that you specifically would recommend? Let me know. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.